Andrew Sheets, in this July, my head is spinning. Give us the keel of your strategy right now. What is the thing keeping you on a straight and narrow path into Q3 and Q4? Great. Well, it's it's great to be here with you. I, I think a key message is patience. You know, we're in a bear market. We are going through the, the different cycles and parts of a bear market. But this is a process that still has further to play out. And I think the market has made good progress on the inflation front. You know, we started to see inflation break-evens come down. I think the market is clearly getting more comfortable with the long-term inflation story. I think we've done made good progress in pricing in more from the Fed. Uh, but there's still a growth slowdown ahead of us, and we still think that not enough of that is in the price and not enough of that is reflected in earnings expectations. So, you know, there's been good progress. Valuations have adjusted. Sentiment is more negative. Both those things are good. But I think we want to see more signs that we're closer to that trough in growth and that we've seen more resetting in earnings expectations. You touched on the answer to this question just there at the end there, Andrew. Build on it. You said we're in a bear market. How do you know when we're not in a bear market? And when you get to that point, is it often too late? Yeah, it's, it's a fair point. I think if we think about, you know, dynamics of this bear market, there's obviously the scale of the drawdown that qualifies. There's the nature of the market leadership, which is very defensive. You know, there's the, the fact that, you know, we've seen uh, certain conditions that often go along with bear markets, policy tightening, curve inversion, declining PMIs, all those elements are there. But But you're right, you know, by the time the economic data really turns, usually it's it's too late. So, you know, in terms of things that we're looking for, I think, you know, PMIs being below 50 is usually a, a better indication that the market is closer to that growth trough. I think we'd like to see more signs that analysts are cutting numbers more aggressively, which is usually a sign that, again, sentiment on the analyst side is getting a lot more cautious. Signs that individual investors are getting more negative on the market, again, I think would be a good sign that you're closer to that trough. And, you know, we're making progress on that front, but I think not quite there yet. Andrew, looking for that relative outperformance on the way down and hopefully some absolute positive returns too. You guys are focused on defensives. Now, Andrew, some people might hear defensives and they start to gravitate towards some of the tech names. Andrew, I want you to really define what you mean by defensive and why you want to stay there still. So we've been thinking about defensives in the traditional utilities, staples, healthcare uh, baskets, and those those have become more expensive sectors. They've uh, re-rated um, or, or relatively re-rated in a pretty significant way, which again is, is never great. I mean, I think it's a sign of how difficult this market is that the places to hide or the traditional places to hide have become more expensive, which makes it more difficult to hide in them. But you know, we're still overweight utilities and healthcare. We still think the market will gravitate and pay a, a, an increasing premium for those sectors as, uh, as growth risks continue to abound. Uh, we think also that the market is, is under positioned in those areas still. And, you know, those are areas where uh, we, we're least worried about growth slowing down mm -hmm. utilities because we think the demand is relatively non cyclical. Healthcare, because I think that's a sector that could actually benefit as. Uh, demand shifts from goods to services in the economy. Healthcare uh, is is very exposed to a lot of services type of spending as things renormalize. So, you know, that's currently still where where our U.S. equity strategy team is overweight, where mm. we think investors can still find out performance, but it clearly has become uh, uh, more expensive as the as the market has declined. Okay, Andrew. So that's what you're buying in equities. What else people have been buying over the course of the year so far is commodities and the dollar. How close are we to the peak of those trades? So we think the dollar can still rise further. We think the DXY will move up to around 112 uh, by, by the third quarter. So that's a relatively sharp near-term move that, that our foreign exchange team is expecting. And that's on the back of the fact that we think the Fed is much more likely to meet or beat uh, implied rate expectations than the ECB, where we think weak growth will ultimately raise the risk that the ECB won't be able to hike as much as the market expects, that the Bank of England won't be able to hike as much as the market expects. And on commodities, I think it remains a story of, of energy versus metals. Uh, on the energy side, we still think further gains are are possible, especially against the forward curve, which is implying large price declines. We are forecasting higher energy prices into the third quarter. I think the metals case remains much more challenging, uh, where a lot more of that is driven by uncertain Chinese demand. But for oil prices, we think they're moving higher over the next three months. Andrew, did you just say DXY 112? Yes. Wow. 
Andrew, that is a monster move. Andrew Sheets there of Morgan Stanley.